Hey everyone, this is Three Questions with my friend Steve Bowler. <laughs> Got theme music and everything, Steve. This is great, man. Check me out. All right. Even though I'm adding a fourth question lately, and this is my favorite question I asked Steve, uh, what is his theme song that he'd go into? And he went some old school hip hop, and I love this song. So, Steve. Don't sweat technique. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to remember. Like that was like there's like an NBA superstars video with that exact song, and like yeah. there's gonna be some player associated with it. Like why that song? I love it. I love that man. That that song from my youth, Eric B. Rock M. Don't sweat the technique. I I used to have that on my headphones, tape deck, walking to school. You know, get me hyped up, and I still to this day. That's my hype song. I hear that. I'm I'm I'm, I'm level ten. I've heard that song 10 million times and I've never known who sang that. Eric B. Right? Rock him. Rock him. I love it. Yep. I love it. Okay. Well, hey, thanks for being on. So, yeah. uh, Stan Tall Steve, right? Yes. This is, uh, we are going to, uh, I know that you, I, I've seen you speak. I've actually watched you not only work with adults, but actually walk, work with students and totally inspiring, totally amazing. And the first question I'd like to ask, and I'm really curious about what your answer is, because I've watched you inspire so many kids as well. And so looking back at your teaching career, looking back at your career as a student, like who's a teacher that really inspired you and, and, and what did they do that did that? Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate it so much. Yeah, hands down, uh, the one teacher that inspired me more than anything was my middle school art teacher. Her name is Miss Wynn Hammond. Miss Wynn Hammond, she, uh, hands down the best. I, I went to a, um, a private Christian school from, uh, I guess like first grade all the way up until fourth grade. And then in fifth grade, which, uh, my parents said to me, Hey, you have the option of either staying in that private school or you can go to the public school. Cause my brother, uh, was going to go to the public school. So I had this option. I could stay where I am to go to public school. So I'm like, I'll go to the public school. Um, so the public school at the middle school started, it, it was fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. So when I get there, um, I always knew that I liked to draw and, and, and stuff like that, but I had art and Mrs. Hammond was there. It's the first time I met Mrs. Hammond and she was just the nicest person in the world. She didn't care what color you were. She didn't care, you know, anything. She just wanted to be there for you and teach you about art and being creative and, the more I drew, the more that I, I did things, the more that she would encourage me. Uh, one of the things that I loved most was in the, in the morning, because where I grew up was mostly a minority town. I guess it was, it was easily good 75 to 80% African-American with a mixture of everything else with all the other ones. Uh, in the mornings, everybody walked. It was a small town. We all walked to school. So if you walked to school and you got there a little early, Mrs. Hammond would allow some students to come down to her classroom and hang out in the art room before school started. And she was always welcoming. She was always friendly. She would let us play some music. She wouldn't put up with any mess. Everybody had to be respectful. Um, <laughs> but she, she just was there for everybody. She listened to every single one of the students. If you wanted to work on some artwork, you could. If you just wanted to hang out and talk, you could do that. And then I would come to her class after school. She would look at my artwork and tell me how great it was. And then once I, I was there for fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, it was with Mrs. Hammond. She was just a wonderful person, always connected well with her, talked to my parents about how good I was and art made me feel like a good person. I went on to high school and she went out of her way to, to check on me. Like, you know, I, awesome. I already left the middle school. Uh, I would come home and, you know, my mom or dad would say, you know, get a phone call. Oh, it's Mrs. Hammond. She called to check in on you. I said, wait a sec, she's on the phone? No, she talked to us. You know, so it, it wasn't that she just talked to, because she did. There were times she would call and she would talk to me on the phone. And I thought that was great. But there are other times she just called and talked to my parents just to see how I was doing. So I would go out of my way and I would go and I would talk, I would stop by and check her, her, her at her classroom from high school. I would walk home. Um, in 11th grade, we moved. We moved out of town. We moved somewhere else. Um, we didn't stay in town. Um, she still checked on me. She still called. Um, when I when I decided to go to college, because at first I, I wasn't gonna. I was I was thinking I, I wanted to go into art. I was going to go and go to an art school uh, and become a commercial artist. 
Um, but ultimately, I started to think about it, had some experiences in my life, and I decided I want to become an art teacher. And the reason why I wanted to become an art teacher is because of Mrs. Hammond. Mm. And, it, and it's just how she was. You know, yeah, I loved art and I loved the way that she taught art, but I loved the way that she treated kids. I loved the way that she treated and interacted with them. And that inspired me to want to be uh, an art teacher. And when I became an art teacher, she, she called me, she congratulated me. She checked in on me when I was in college several times. Um, you know, once I graduated, we had our little graduation party. She was there. Um, she invited me and my girlfriend to her house for lunch. I mean, wow. she was always there. When I got my first art teaching job, now here's the kicker. I got my first teach job as an art teacher, pre-K to third grade art in Lawrenceville, New Jersey. There's a state art education uh, conference that she said you need to go to. I said, okay, I'm gonna go. So I signed up to go. The day that it was supposed to happen, my car died. I couldn't go. So I mm -hmm. called Mrs. Hammond and I says, it was early in the morning. I says, I just want to let you know, my car is dead. I can't make it. I won't be able to get there. I, I got to figure this whole thing out. She says, I'll come and pick you up. I'll come get you. So she drove up, picked me up, took me to the conference. We get to the conference. I go to the table for registration. She goes over to the table to register. She wasn't registered to go. She picked me up <laughs> and took me to the conference. And she wasn't even going to go. Amazing. I said, are you registered for this conference? She says, no, I wasn't going to go. But I know you needed to go. I, I love that woman. I, I, I love that woman. She is, Unfortunately, she passed away about five years ago. Um, you want to talk about inspiring? That That's it right there. Well, that, that, you know, it's, you know, as I'm listening and I've connected with you in person, I've seen you speak and I know like, obviously you're interested in arts, but like, I think that the way you connect with people, the way that I've seen you present, you are displaying artistry all the time. And yeah. like, I, I often talk about my uh, music teacher, Mrs. Penrose, and a lot of the stuff that I do when I'm speaking was taught to me, uh, even though I didn't really realize it until later on in life. And so it's just a, not only a shout out to like, like Mrs. Hammond, but like to every like art music teacher out there. So they got the special shout out. Right. <laughs> That's it. Okay. That's it. <laughs> All right. Okay. So you're, you are like a, 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 a just such a, a thought leader in the area of leadership. And I know that uh, in our podcast, we talked a lot about this, you know, about leadership and what you think of that. So in your endeavors as an educator, as a student, when you think of like a really great administrator and it could be, you know, whether you're, whether it was as a student or teacher, like who do you think of and why? Oh, great administrator. Um, <laughs> there's two, well, here, here's the thing. I, I got two and it's for completely two different reasons. Um, and I'll, I'll be quick about it, but I'll, I'll get to the point yeah. of where we are with it. The first one is Dr. Greya, Dr. Richard Greya. He was my very first principal right out of college. All right hired me as the art teacher, uh, pre-K to third grade, little tiny guys uh, in Lawrenceville, New Jersey. Um, I wouldn't say that he was phenomenal. He was good. It's quality. Yeah. Old school administrator for an elementary school. But I had an evaluation with him. At the evaluation, he pulls me in the office. We do our a post observation. We go over things. It was fine. I did a good job. And he said I did a good job. I'm getting up ready to walk out. And he says to me, Steve, by the way, before you leave, make sure you go back to school for your master's degree. And at the time I was like, I don't know. I don't know what I'm getting my master's in. I, I know I didn't want to get it in art. You know, I, like, I, I said, all right, thanks. You know, thank you. He says, hold it, hold it, hold it. He told me this, he stopped me because he didn't like the way I answered it. He said, sit down. <laughs> <laughs> he said, seriously, Steve, Go back and get your get your master's. If nothing else, it moves you up on the pay scale and he's going through the basic stuff. And I said, to be honest with you, Dr. Gray, I I, I don't know what I, to get my master's in. I wouldn't even have a clue where to begin. And he says, it could be in anything. It could be an in instruction. It could be, you know, you could be a principal. You could be, I said, whoa, whoa, what did you say? He says, what, principal? Yeah, I could be a principal. And he says, yeah, you could be a principal. Why couldn't you be a principal? I said, well, I teach art. He said, so? 
because, you know, how often do you hear about art teachers becoming principals? It's just, you know, mm. I didn't think that was something that was an option. And I was like, huh, I could be a principal? He says, Steve, you really can be a principal. There's no reason why you couldn't. Do it. If that's what you want to do, do it. The main thing is, is get your master's. So I say great administrator, Dr. Greya, because he stopped me and he put the thought of leadership in my head. Um, and I, I don't think I'd be an administrator if he, I don't know if I would have been one if he didn't say that. So that that's the first one. Um, and it's interesting because from there, I started studying administrators. I really started looking at administrators to see if it's what I wanted. And I realized I don't like administrators. Um, I did. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's the reason why I became an administrator is because I didn't like them. I didn't think they were creative enough or they were ingenuity, you know, and all those kind of things. So um, I said, I'm going to be the administrator who is. And that's why I got into it. Um, the second person was, uh, uh, she's, she was the administrator of the school where I got, had my first administrative job. She hired me as a vice principal. She was the principal. And I'm not going to say her name. And there's a reason why. Um, I learned so much from her. And, I, and it is sad to say, but of what not to do. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, yelling at kids, you know, certain ways that you do certain things to lead. And I could have easily said, okay, well, that's the way administration is. But then I fell back on what it is that I learned from Dr. Greya is, you know what? I'll be the different kind of administrator. So she was consistent. There was a gr lot of great qualities that she has hands down but i also learned about things that i knew that i just will not do and from that moment forward even in my speaking now in my training now and the things that i do i think about the things that i don't like and i don't do them period like when i teach other people other educators about speaking or training or doing things what things don't you like well i don't like this i don't like like this i don't like this then don't do it you know if uh, you right. know there's certain things in administration I don't like this. I don't like like this, like this. Well, then don't do it that way. Get to the end result, but do it in a way that would be most beneficial. So, you know, she's very influential in, me, in my life uh, because of the way that she did things. And I, you know, I think there's so much to unpack there from yeah. just listening about your first administrator, seeing something in you that you didn't see in yourself. Right. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I think too, one of the things that I appreciate about what you just shared is that it's, it's really easy to complain about things that you see and of what other people do, but it actually takes effort to go be a different version of that and actually yeah. go into the roles. Like you can, you can complain about administrators they want. And I'm like, well, go be one, go do it different and, and show how this works. Right. Yeah. So this is like lessons from the, lessons from that too, right? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, truthfully, you're right. That's great. But you know, it's true. I really could have just said, you know what, I don't like all these administrators. Oh my gosh, I'm not joining right. that. I'm not doing that. Right. But I'm thinking, yeah. why not? No, I'm going to yeah. go do it my way. Uh, I knew it wasn't going to be easy, but it wasn't. But I did it. There you go. Okay, so so this actually lends beautifully into the last question because okay. I guarantee you, and I know I know your work, I know who you are, but I guarantee you that there's things that you look back on that you did that you're like, I can't believe I used to do that. Right. <laughs> and so, so like, I, you know, I, I would like to say that there is never a time that I didn't raise my voice to students and I would be lying to you. Right. But I know that's right. I know that's wrong now. And that's not, a, that's not a way it's like, you know, everybody calm down, doesn't calm people down when you yell it. Right. Mm -hmm. So like when you look back in your career, when you, if you were to go back to your, your first year as a teacher, like what advice would you give yourself? Oh, man. Well, you know, it's interesting. One of the things that I really thought was great and I wanted to be early, really early on, I wanted to be the cool teacher. I wanted to mm -hmm. be the uh, the cool, the popular teacher. I was a good teacher. I was. I, I, I was. I considered myself to be, even looking back, I was a quality teacher. Um, but one of the things I would definitely tell my, myself back is don't worry about being the cool teacher. Stop it. Mm -hmm. Stop it. You know, just let your actions speak for themselves, themselves. And um, don't worry about that. And plus, here's the thing. The second you become a teacher, your cool points go out the window. 
You're, you're, you're an adult. You're, <laughs> it's, it's, stop it. You're, you're an adult. You're a grown up. It doesn't matter. You're a teacher. I don't care how young you look. You're now a teacher. You are goofy. You're, you're, you know, and even I was teaching pre-K to third grade. I was teaching little kids. You're still an old, you're still an adult. You're, you're Stop it. I, I think I would have grown. I would have allowed myself to grow so much more instructionally, uh, relationship wise and everything. If I didn't worry about that, it took me a while to get over that. It, it took me a, a, a while to get over that. I liked being the cool, I, you know, I'm, I'm six foot seven. I know you can't tell in this. I'm, I'm a tall, you know this, but I'm a tall guy. I'm the tall, call, cool, black guy teacher, right? And I was like, what is wrong with you, man? Stop it. You know, so. <laughs> that, that, I, yeah. actually, I, had a, I had a student that I really connected with and he just one day he messaged me and it was like, he was trying to, he's like, so you, so you went to school from like kindergarten, grade 12, then you went to college. So you could go back to school. So you could, <laughs> I just remember that because like why you know, and I think it, like it's just funny that that perception and there's no there's it, there's no way you're not cool still. Like all all the students that I saw. Mm. So maybe maybe once you stopped trying to be cool, yeah, you actually became cool. Yes, yes, <laughs> I, I I would I would hundred percent agree with that. And I and I I stopped worrying about that, and I just produced yeah. Give good value, good quality, good relationship. Be genuine. Um, yeah. Don't look for gimmicks. Don't look for any of that. Just be true. You know, do do what it is that's right. And you know, it it'll the, the quality will come out in the end. You know, kids will think that you're cool, think that you're great, think that you're all right. Yeah. But that's you know that level of humbleness there. I, you know, I always say that. Um, you know, being confident, it, confidence is arrogance under control. As yeah. whereas arrogance is confidence out of control. So oh, that good. middle line is where you want to be. You want to be confident, that, but you don't want to get the arrogance. That gets one of these. Thank you. <laughs> that, that's, that's a great line. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Anyways, Steve, it is so awesome to talk to you and so many great lessons. Thanks for everyone listening. I hope you have a wonderful day.